Today we are going to look at my usual grocery haul so you guys get an idea of how I incorporate high quality nutrient dense animal foods into my diet on a daily basis. This refrigerator in my garage is where I keep the bulk of my meat. I drive out to a farm in Pennsylvania once per month uh, to pick up approximately one month's worth of beef. Uh, today I only have three things. It's super simple. I have some fat, uh, back fat from the back part of the top of the cow, about 30 pounds. Uh, we got some chuck roll and we have some beef navel belly. Super simple, fat, fatty beef. Uh, the rest of my organ meats and products I usually buy from other local farms on a weekly basis. This is the back fat. It's a bit yellow. It's not like a super deep orangish yellow, but it's pretty high quality stuff. And I've been eating this the past few days. I've been really enjoying it. Uh, this is the chuck roll. They didn't do that great of a job at vacuum sealing it. So I'm eating the chuck roll first. And there's actually a bone in on this. Uh, I paid about eight, eight fifty a pound for the chuck roll, uh, which is expensive for chuck roll, but it is uh, freshly slaughtered grass-fed beef and I'm happy with the quality. And then up here I have all of the beef belly. So this is cryovac a little bit better. Uh, the belly is a very large part of the animal and they usually call it the plate. So I have about 30 pounds of the navel belly, about 20 pounds of the chuck roll, and I had 30 pounds of the beef fat. Overall, the meat is much darker because of the quality of the pasture the animals are on. It's higher in all the vitamins, all the minerals. You know, the fat has a nice yellow tinge to it. It contains more fat-soluble vitamins. It's a unique and different experience. If you guys haven't purchased beef from a local farm, especially freshly slaughtered, I encourage you to do so. When the meat is really fresh, it literally doesn't taste like anything. It's really interesting. When I had this fat and this meat, two or three days ago, I was cooking it and putting some salt on it and it didn't really have much flavor to it. The meat usually takes three to five days to develop some flavor and then another two to three weeks to have the amount of flavor that you're used to beef having. In the freezer down here, I just have some stuff for my sister, like ham from a local farm. I have some pork sausages, hot dogs, a bologna. These local farms tend to produce a lot of charcuterie, cured meats, even deli meats. So if you want really high quality grass-fed beef, pastured pork made into more approachable foods, you can buy that from your local farm. The only downside is they are almost always frozen as these butcher shops and these farms, you know, they don't make bologna every week. They make it once a month, you know, once every few months. But definitely an approachable way to introduce these high quality foods uh, to your children or some picky eaters. Uh, so let's go back upstairs and take a look at what I have in the upstairs fridge that I'm eating on a daily basis. We are at my parents' house, so the majority of the stuff in this refrigerator is for my family. I do come up every single day to help take care of my sister who is unfortunately mentally disabled. I live in one of the boroughs. It's not too far of a drive. So we're going to take a look at some of the meals I prepare for her as well as how I help my parents increase the nutrient density in their diet using high quality animal foods. So on the shelves here, I actually have some cod liver. I'm going to do a video tasting this likely on Saturday for you guys. So definitely keep an eye out for that. It is delicious. Have some butter here. Uh, my mother likes the Kerrygold butter. I usually do buy raw butter from the farm, but you know, spending $15 a pound on raw butter from time to time, you know, especially when some people don't appreciate it, is not something I usually like doing. For myself in here, I have some of that beef fat that we saw downstairs. I have a container of beef brains that I eat a couple times a week. I have some chicken livers here that I have on a daily basis. And here I have some salmon roe, AKA caviar. Uh, the brains and the roe are for EPA, DHA, omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, the chicken livers are for overall nutrient density. 
and the beef fat is for calories. So everything in here is what I need to achieve every single nutrient my body needs. Uh, the only thing that's missing up here is I bring up some protein on a daily basis. Um, my sister's meals I put up here. Uh, I cook her and my mother eggs every day. Uh, these are eggs from a local farm, soy free. Uh, they get like corn and alfalfa, so better omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. I put some raw butter in here or raw cream with uh, usually a little bit of iodine and vitamin D3 uh, to help with their supposed deficiencies. For my sister's lunch, I usually just give her some bologna from a local farm, uh, beef bologna. And for dinner, for a couple days, she has some cheeseburgers. Uh, for a snack, my sister has pate that I make for her. Uh, she actually likes a raw pate that I make with pork liver, heavy cream, and honey. So I literally just take those three ingredients, puree them up, I put that in a container for her, and I usually put some raw cheese with the pate as well. Uh, here I have some Parmigiano Reggiano. So she dips the raw cheese in the pate. Uh, down here are some of the eggs from a local farm. I pay about six to seven dollars a dozen, so it adds up, but they don't eat too many eggs. Here's a container of raw heavy cream. Uh, my family loves this stuff. Looks like ice cream. Completely delicious. Frankie boy is unfortunately allergic to dairy, but my parents I uh, love the heavy cream. My dad puts it in his coffee. That's really all there is to see in this fridge. I mean, you know, my family does eat like conventional eggs. That's what my dad has, you know, peanut butter and jelly. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff like Thomas English muffins that they eat, uh, crappy low quality deli meats, some fruit. In the freezer up here, the only thing worth noting is uh, some vanilla ice cream I get from a local farm. Uh, my family loves this. My dad eats like half the tub every time. And, you know, the cream, the egg yolks in this ice cream are from high quality animals. So we're getting some nutrient density, yet we have a delicious food. Dairy and eggs really make things approachable. Uh, people seem to be a bit averse to organ meats and stuff. Uh, but let's take a look at some other things I have floating around my kitchen uh, that I do use. Over here, I actually have some new pans I just bought. I'm going to talk about uh, cooking appliances next week and what the healthiest options are. So if you guys have any questions pertaining to that, uh, definitely let me know. We'll go over things like knives, microwaves, uh, sharpening stones, fry pans. But over here is where I keep my non-perishable stuff. I actually do have a jar of high meat fermenting here. I mean, they make cheese in a similar way. I know a lot of people are averse to having a jar of rotten meat or fat. Uh, but this is what I do to get in some fermented foods, some vitamin K2, some healthy gut bacteria, as I am allergic to dairy and eggs. What I did here was I took a mason jar, I cut up some fat, I put it in the mason jar, and I put a towel on the top instead of the metal seal. And this lets air in and out of the jar, creates an aerobic environment, uh, so the meat ferments properly. I keep this at room temperature. Uh, I do have a video on high meat and rotten meat uh, if you guys do want to check that out. Well, the only other things I really keep here that I consume myself are cooking fats like tallow from Frankie's Free Range Meat. I also have some liver jerky here. Uh, this is really delicious, guys. We make it with honey and black pepper. I'll talk about that later. And just some other cooking fats here. I have some bacon fat. Uh, I have some bone marrow fat. Uh, some stuff I'm going to do some future videos on, like wild rice and uh, heirloom types of wheat. Uh, this is the salt I've been using lately, Redmond's Real Salt. Uh, we do have this on Frankie's Free Range Meat as well. Uh, but it's just uh, one of my favorites lately. A bunch of other salts up in this cabinet, like Fleur de Sel de Garand. I did a video titled Himalayan salt is bullshit and I spoke about a bunch of other salts in that video so if you guys have questions about what my favorite salt is you can check out that video. I keep my iodine and my vitamin D3 supplement up here. I use the vitamin D3 myself when I don't get some sun and I use the iodine on occasion as well when I don't consume high iodine foods uh, like brains or salmon roe. 
I spend approximately six to eight hundred dollars a month on food. Uh, to me, it's the most important investment for my health, and that doesn't include supplements, that doesn't include cooking equipment, uh, that doesn't include other miscellaneous expenses like driving around and picking up food. So I'm probably closer to a thousand dollars. If you keep in mind how much money the average person spends on food at about $140 per week, I'm not too far off because other people, they go out, they buy coffee, they buy lunch, they go to restaurants, they go out drinking. So me not doing those things, I invested all into groceries and food from local farms. I did do a video on how to do a carnivore diet on a budget sometime last year. So it's possible to do this, but that's one of the goals with uh, my new company, Frankie's Free Range Meat. We are looking to provide you guys with all of the food that you've seen here, essentially, and make it affordable. Having things like cod liver, caviar, raw cheeses, these organ meats, things that people can't even get, we want to provide them at a price that every single person can fit into their grocery budget. So if you guys want to support that goal, you can go to frankiesfreerangemeat.com, check out our mission, and if you'd like, place an order. Uh, we're going to be shipping out the first round of orders in early June. Uh, so guys, please do place an order before next week if you are uh, interested in uh, trying our products and uh, supporting the future of us getting even more products for you guys. Uh, we want to do things like raw dairy, have our own eggs, pastured pork, really high quality stuff. If you guys have any questions about these foods, the nutrient profile, check out some of the past few days of eating. And of course, if you have any additional questions, let me know down below. Guys, I have videos on just about everything. If it's raw versus cooked, fresh versus frozen, the answer lies somewhere on my YouTube channel. So thank you guys for joining me today. Please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon and share it if you can. Uh, definitely something to be said about uh, supporting local farms, supporting high quality food. You don't really hear anyone talk about this, whether it's vegans or carnivores. And for one reason or another, some people don't like spending the money. Some people don't like putting in the effort. Uh, some people are funded by some not so good interest groups. Uh, if you guys are really lost on this and need help sourcing food, I have consulted with people in the past on food sourcing and just helping people explore their local options on, you know, what farms to go to, what meat purveyors to go to, and how to get quality animal nutrition in their diet at an affordable price. Uh, again, thank you guys for joining me today. Enjoy the rest of the week.